Good morning, everybody, and thank you to Karen for collating all the Q&A questions from our various social media um, inboxes and from the inbox that you can reach through our website, cruelwork.com. Cruel you think I know how to say it by now. And I'm sitting on my creaky chair in the office overlooking my neighbour's perfect vegetable garden, which our three hens visit with monotonous regularity and they lay their eggs between the kale and the runner beans at the moment. So I'm going to sneak over as it gets dark. I think I'm rather embarrassed that our hens are so free range. Oh, dear me. Anyway, right. The q and A's this week on YouTube. I, I talked about throwing away old needles and said that my friend Meredith always advises that you get rid of your needles at the end of each project. Now, you know, I'm really uh, I'm really against getting rid of anything, but we recycle everything and certainly continuing to use new needles unless it's a very small kit is a bad idea or bad needles just occasionally there's a little bobble on the end particularly on the gold plating you get extra gold which is sort of a bonus but not really when you're stitching and you might like to uh poke the needle into a little bag of very fine sand to make it super sharp but actually it's best to have new needles and they're really not that expensive anyway Anne Cleave writes, re-needles, I don't like throwing them away either, more from the H&S point of view though. That's health and safety in, in UK speak, I don't know where it is from your part of the world. Right, oh, I had bought some vanilla beans and they came in an oversized test tube with a cork. So I now put my tired needles into that and then they go in the metal recycling bin at the local tip. Note to self, buy some more vanilla beans. I like you. I think I want to come and stay with you, Anne. <laughs> Sounds jolly nice. Anyway, back to the letter. I can't wait to see how Katie transfers Arthur in the Tree of Life piece. I'm adding Gina, my English Springer Spaniel, so any hints or tips would be very welcome. This is the lady, um, Karen says, this is the lady whose dog chewed her 911 wool and Frankie sent a replacement skein, so um, which we featured on Facebook and Instagram. So you can see we're all speaking to each other, however isolated we are in these present circumstances. So, um, Anne, I really appreciate your response and our relationship with you. And thank you very much. And I can't wait to see Gina. Can perhaps we have um, a picture of Gina um, sometime? Maybe Karen's already got one. So um, maybe we could see what you're going to put into your tree of life. The next question. This is from the Sunday video about the Muncaster collection. The first one I did, which was about two weeks ago who's Jackie York, she said, suggests you could do a simple pattern based on the red squirrel. Well, funnily enough, Jackie, we had a very successful kit called Secret Squirrel for a long, 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 long time. And, you know, we can't carry hundreds of designs of kits at the same time because um, my accountant told me that we wouldn't stay in business if we had them forever. So, um, and we have actually, our, our house is large and our workroom is large down in the studio at the hub but it's not that large to have lots and lots and lots of kits so yes I'm sure there will be a red squirrel in the future and we do have a simple pattern that we could possibly re-release and um, if there's a demand for that then perhaps people could let me know because um, I'm, I know there's lots of secret squirrels out there and perhaps people could post them on our Facebook page or their own. Question number three which kits for new stitchers? Two questions Instagram from the post on the Jacobean stag from Dingrid. I think that's Ingrid with a D. She says, if I have never stitched before, is the Jacobean stag pattern doable or should I start with the entry level, level patterns? I just love this one so much. Well, Ingrid, that, that is, you know, that's what people ask all the time on workshops. Can I do this? And I've had people who are real novices um, just go for it with a with a really advanced kit in the days when my kits did not have bespoke instructions when it was just general instructions so I'm always amazed what people can do and uh, similarly I'm I'm often amazed what people are nervous about so um, I just say that if you like something and you want to do it you should do that and I really mean just do it because although I've got lots of videos on lots of stitches and I know people like to 
practice pieces and some of the kits we, we supply have practice linens in them if they're very advanced like um, Alison Cole's kits I, I consider you know quite challenging for the crew worker to go on to gold work so um, and I find it challenging myself so I we put in a practice linen and the future Aesop's fables uh, frame is a more advanced kit that will have a practice linen in it because things are worked in a slightly different way but I, I personally just like to get on with it and if it's not right add extra stitches over the top so perhaps you would like to start the Jacobean stag and tell me just give me some feedback on how you're feeling as you're doing it the bits you found easy and the bits you didn't find easy because that helps us a lot when we're writing instructions when we're getting the next lot of instructions printed and very often we we just pop in one extra illustration and that that is to me you know I'm a visual learner and although I can describe in words the stitches as if I was teaching them because I record them and then write them into the text into the instructions um, actually seeing a picture and an image and seeing where somebody's finger is where I, Georgie's great now she's <laughs> practically she's been adding fingers to the stitches of where your upper hand's fingers are placed as you do a stitch so for example on the cruel outline stem stitch you can use your second finger just to push the loop out of the way and if you really read the instructions have a go read the instructions again as you do it and then refer to the images and look online and blow those pictures up with the plus button on your laptop or computer or if you've got an iPad you know that's great as well. So I hope I've answered your question Ingrid and please just keep the dialogue going because you know I'm here I'm not going anywhere at the moment especially this is a good time to ask the question and it would be lovely for everybody if by next Wednesday or the Wednesday after or the Wednesday after that, you know, you were stitching the stag and we could just have a little update on your progress. So don't be modest or shy or, you know, think that you're um, not good enough at anything. Just have a go and uh, share and everybody will will benefit because you will be asking the questions that everybody wants to ask, but some are too shy to. Question four. This is on Instagram from Returning Home Embroidery. Now, I'm not sure if that's a company or a person, but Returning Home Embroidery, if you recognise that, this question's for you. Which kit would you recommend for a beginner? That is such a good question. So I sort of answered it in the last discussion on the last question, but actually um, we, do, we have divided things into level one, level two, level three. Um, and it's really, it's really trying to help people decide that question, just narrow down to some kits. I love teaching tumbling feathers. And I've noticed in our starter sets, which are really for people new to embroidery or new to using our equipment or this type of embroidery, um, we've, we sell a lot of tumbling feathers and it's a good value kit. It's, it's really easy to do because it's a larger scale. And funnily enough, because wool is a slightly thicker thread, the bigger the design, sometimes that's the easier shape to do. You know, the scale of a of a leaf in the late 17th century, you know, some of the 15 inches wide and, and you know, nine inches across. So um, it's really, uh, it's really interesting to see some of the tiny little designs I see um, in cruel work. You know, you've got to be very careful with the stitches you use on a very small scale. So it's not necessarily a small thing. Um, so I would say the tumbling feathers or anything in the level one is a very good one. The rabbits at dawn kit was specifically for nervous beginners, and that's been a great seller recently as well. The rat in the rabbits kit, you get every element you need pretty well to do the bigger tree of life. So if you're a kind of brave beginner and you want to learn everything, then the rabbits is excellent for that. And after all, you know, we've got the time to do it at the moment, hopefully. And um, Katie is also demonstrating that every day. And we have had a daily video. Every, we've had a daily video since the beginning of our lockdown in the UK. So that is, you know, since the middle of March, we well, third week in March, we have just had something every single day. So hopefully you could just go in there and, gorge on on videos and see what we're doing the videos with me in are slightly closer up usually and katie is just learning so um so if you just 
watch Katie's videos, watch what she's asking questions about with that particular design if you're doing the rabbits. Right, last one, Instagram. Shakespeare's gentleman's nightcap, Mamari. She says, how do you, or he, how do you stitch that gold cord to the fabric? And then there's a great big, lovely heart, which means <laughs> a lot to me today. That's such a nice thing to put on. I, I love a good emoji, Mamari. Um, I agree. How do you stitch that gold cord to the fabric? To, to be honest, I struggle. I struggle with every gold work stitch. I really do. And um, I find crew work much easier. It's my natural thing. But gold, I love the effect of gold work. It's just beautiful, just beautiful. And, um, you know, Alison's work, you know, she did Shakespeare's Border for us at the last retreat, which she's teaching at the festival. Just that combination of, you know, silks and golds and oh, it's on green velvet, it's amazing. The nightcap, absolutely historically correct. The colours are perfect. She's, you know, Alison studied the piece. You're recreating history and you're creating an heirloom. So it's worth taking time over that one. The stitches on that one stitch through the fabric, but some of the stitches couch over it. So couching is when you lay a thread on the top of the fabric and couch it down. So it's couché French, you know, as you many, many of you will know, many of the words for embroidery stitches are from the old Norman French and I bang on about this because it says what it is laid and couched lay a couche and couche a couche so laid and couched so I now have a um, grandchild knocking at the door so I'm going to say goodbye and uh, thank you very much for listening um, and uh, I wish you well and um, wish Katie well with the next stage I've sent her a rather nagging little <laughs> text on the Facebook page saying you should be doing this and you should be doing that so poor girl um, but she seems to be cheerful throughout so that is the amazing thing and I saw her very briefly in the distance yesterday and she's looking well and her mum was um, in our workroom well we have an isolation room down in Appleby and uh, she was there with her mum isolating and overlocking all the designs and packing kits for you so um, good luck to everybody who's waiting for a kit and uh, they'll be there very shortly and you can always track your parcel thanks very much bye bye